Shh, see that? Hold on. <gasps> I think it's a deer. Hi, my name is Davis Toss, and I am from the Lynn Seminole Forage Club from Indago County. Today, I will be talking a little about deer management in South Texas. So deer management separates into two categories. One is habitat management, which, which, which consists of nutrition, which is food, water, and supplementation. And then you have population management, quality deer management versus trophy management. And then you have a record keeping. So providing quality habitat is essential for any deer management program. So this is food, water, cover, and brush. So deer require at least 16% protein content for their dietary needs. It needs to be well nourished. Texans can meet with Ohio, Acacia, and Granjeno or shelves that have greater than 20% protein content. Ragweed, dayflower, and hermium are forbs that have greater than 20% protein content. Deer prefer to feed on a wide variety of plants and brush. The shrubs or woody plant eaten by deer are called grass. Prickly pear cactus make a large part of the deer's diets. Although low in protein, they are high in vitamin A, which is carbohydrates. You should always be aware of your water sources, especially during drought seasons. So this is like troughs, ponds, creeks, and even lakes. In deer management, landowners often like to place water sources to maintain the deer herd. So right here is your native brushes and shrubs. So right here is kidney wood, and then you have cat claw acacia, and then right here is John Hennel. And then these are the forbs that are in the deer. So then we have western ragweed, dayflower, and Permian tex texana. Brush and cover. Brush should be adequate and diverse to, to provide food and enough cover for your population. Brush should never be clear much to remove desirable species. Cover plants to provide escape, shade, and protections for the deer. And also maintain brush, forbs, and grasses. The mosquito, which is so prevalent in South Texas, plays a crucial role in habitat management in South Texas. So mesquite means that fall off of them are good for the deer, and then the leaves that are on it provide shade for them. Deer prefer to feed on a wide variety of plants. A mixed brush habitat is recommended if possible. So what about supplement? What about supplemental feed? Providing non-native food sources should never be substituted for poor habitat management or to maintain excessive animals. So shelf corn is the most popular supplemental feed, and this is this is more for attracting the deer, like when you're going hunting or you just you know you want to get some deer in there. This is not really good for all time. It doesn't really meet the nutritional needs. And what about deer plates or cubes? Containing higher amounts of, pro of protein and minerals can be found, but tend to be expensive, especially when doing large populations. Other animals will also target this feed. And right now, I'm going to show you some good strategies to make them not get it. Cotton is another high protein alternative that can be used. It provides high protein and fat. So this is also more of your cheaper end if you really don't want to do supplemental feed like deer pellets and cubes. Food pellets can be beneficial and strategically managed well. They can supplement deer at critical times of the year and appropriate forage can be planted. The, bit, the disadvantage is that they can be expensive to plant and of course this all depending on the rainfall in the year. So I was going to tell you I was going to show you some ways to strategize your deer pots very well. So right here is your deer, your deer corn feeder and it's around a fence. This is to keep other animals from getting to the feed. And then right here is your deer um, protein feeder. This is a tree one, but there's also spouts that you can attach to the deer corn feeders. And then right here is your cotton seed feeder. So basically how to build that one, this one's pretty easy. You just drive either one or two T-balls in, and then you wrap some chicken wire around it and pour the cotton seed to the top. Now we have population management. Population analysis. Pop deer density, buck to the ratio, Farm survival, mortality, and age structure. And then you have harvest strategy. Harvest data, number of harvested weights, animal measurements, and body conditions. And then you have record keeping. So a deer census is some way to count the number of deer in an area. Walking census, driving census, deer trap counts, spotlight counts, and helicopter counts. Most common spotlight counts and helicopter counts. Research shows most data is best when you're using a helicopter census. 
and then you have harvest datum. Age of animals should be determined. So you can do this by doing a tooth inspection, body weights, and antler measurements. And then if, you're, if you want to start a deer management program, it is best to keep all your tags from your deer. So now record keeping. Important to keep consistent system to maintain data year to year. You should monitor progress of your management system. Then these masters often should keep good data so that way they can see if either they've gotten better or maybe worse. And then you have buck to doe ratio. Ratios vary from one buck to five to ten does one to one. Generally one buck for every one to two does. Again, this is all depending on the landowner goals. Herd compositions. Young bucks versus mature bucks. Removal of all, but of course removal all spikes. So these are like your little two pointers, your little one pointers. So like usually they won't grow anymore. So it's just best to take them out. So there's generally two theories of management. So this is trophy deer management. So these are only fully mature bucks five and a half to seven, seven and a half years old with high scoring animals are harvested. Inferior bucks are aggressively cold and attempt to produce trophy bucks. Those are aggressively harvested to maintain low de deer density and optimize nutrition. Quality deer management. So these are two and a half to four and a half year old bucks harvested. So these are like your eight pointers. So about at least three and a half, four and a half, four and a half would be better. Usually it won't grow and they'll just be eight pointers. So it, you can take them out, that'd be good. Call only adequate number of does harvested to maintain population. Research studies have shown that animal size is not genetic. Bucks with larger scoring animals may not necessarily produce bucks with large animals, and vice versa. Maintaining the nutrition of the habitat affects animal growth more than genetics. When there has been more rape on the area, harvested stores larger animal size. Ultimately, most animals fall between trophy deer management and quality deer management. So what is a good herd? Based on research, an adult doe should weigh 75 to 100 pounds dressed. So dress basically means before I go into the rest of it, it's basically when they're all gutted out. And then an adult buck should weigh 135 pounds to 200 pounds dressed. Fawn production average 40% or better. Buck to doe ratio approximately one to every two does. And now here's one of the prob the deer management programs that I have been a part of. So this is the Texas MLDP. Managed land deer program. So there's the har harvest option, conservation option, and both have extensive hunting seasons. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hunting season. So basically your regular past people will probably be, it'll end about the second week of January, but ours ends at the end of February. Foster support landmen on private islands in Texas, overseen by the Texas Parks and Wildlife. So a little about this program, it's really good for the environment and all, and just, it's just more for the conservation of the year, so every, every year there's a good herd. And then here's me doing some population management this year. So this is a, uh, probably about a three and a half year old buck, and this was an eight pointer, so it was a good call about to harvest. It probably wasn't going to get any bigger. And the sources that I've used today is twp.texasgov and www.qdma.com. Thank you, judges, for all your time and all your hard work.